What's up, spirit souls? I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome to my channel. As always, for those of you who are new here, I'm Chaitanya Das and here is where I come to talk about things like spirituality, self-development, relationships, fitness, the law of attraction, and so much more. But most importantly, I talk about all of these things in connection to the supreme intelligence behind the stringent laws of material nature, in connection to the one known in the Vedic scriptures as the supreme personality of Godhead, the all-attractive one, Krishna. I sincerely hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's good karma. Also, if you want more information on how you can live a, more, a happier and more fulfilling life, please take a look at my website, link in the description below. There you will find wonderful resources designed specifically to assist you with achieving that goal. Now, before I jump right into it, let me roll the intro. Three, two, one, let's go. This world is not what you think it is. So a few videos ago, I talked about um, the first fundamental truths. Based on what I understood from the Vedic scriptures being part of uh, this Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy or being someone that came in contact with Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. No, more than that. 14 years ago. Um, and I was fascinated by the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and other Vedic scriptures. Uh, utilized within the Gaudiya Vaishnav, which is a, you know, a faction, a section, or a sect of uh, Hinduism. One of the main, uh, main uh, Vaishnava sects. There are four main Vaishnava sects. I don't want to get, I don't want to get into that right now. But anyways, as someone that came in contact with Gaudiya Vaishnavism and start listening, you know, to devotees, advanced Vaishnavas, you know, people that have uh, dedicated their lives and, and, and everything they have to their spiritual master, you know, and try to follow the instructions of their spiritual master in becoming devotees themselves and preaching the message of, the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I um, came to my own conclusions, right? Not my own conclusions, but my understanding of what they were trying to, to convey, the knowledge they were trying to convey. And one of the one or a few of the main things that I, that, I, that I concluded, which I believe to be the truth, is uh, the nature of who we really are, right? We are not this body, we are spirit soul. The nature of this material existence and the nature of God. And in not many places you can find people talking about these things, right? It became, um, at least in my limited experience, uh, every time I see people gather and talk about there's a lot of pastimes um, a lot of lessons behind the pastimes which is all good I think they're all beautiful they need to be spoken uh, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about uh, the things that I'm going to be talking about right now in a very practical way uh, it's quite the opposite when I hear people preaching or talking about scriptures and how they apply to our lives I can't help but find that I had, I have, I had and continue to have to a, to a certain point, to a certain extent, the same experience I had growing up in Christianity. It's, it's very dogmatic, right? It's people trying their best, reading scriptures, listening for pe from, from others uh, that they consider authorities. People like Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami uh, Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, people like Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj, um, an advanced Vaishnava from India as well that came you know, after Srila Prabhupada to preach the message of Lord Chaitanya, to preach the cult of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the worship of Radha Krishna, right? Um, and I think it's great. I think it's beautiful. I don't mean to find fault on anyone. I think everybody's doing their best. But I can't help to, to see and find that, again, in my experience, although they have good intentions, it's, it's very dogmatic. People are trying their best and, and convey what they have heard, what they have understood. But it seems to me that the understanding is, is, is not limited, 
but it's not all encompassing in a way that uh, how can I explain this there are some fundamental truths that any conversation has to be based has to have as premise those truths and if these conversations or the preaching or the communication is not based on those truths I think that it opens you know room for a lot of misunderstanding and problems and to be quite honest in my experience that's what I see a lot a lot of the preaching a lot of the conversations happening not having these fundamental truth as the premise right which what is the premise uh, the understanding the thorough understanding of who we really are here in this material body right now independent of your class independent of your initiating guru independent of your um, ashram of what if you're if you're a married man if you're a sannyas a monk or if you're a man a woman independent of all these things the thorough understanding that you're not this body and as clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita that uh, we're not the doers we're not we're not the doers of activity the jiva cannot act independently right material nature is carrying it out so anyways the nature of who, who we really are the nature of this material world which I also uh, believe I can you know for the most part again when I hear people talking it seems that that there's there's a there's a conscious or not conscious but I would say most part for the most part unconscious um, acceptance or understanding or thorough understanding of what the nature of this world is so the nature of who we really are the nature of um, this material world and the nature of Bhagavan right that's the word in Sanskrit Bhagavan God the nature of the supreme the nature of Krishna right so I spoke a few um, months or weeks or months ago about the first which are what I call the first absolute truth was the nature of who we really are spirit souls Shakti energy we're not this body right I believe I spoke a little bit about the concept of not of, of us not being the doers and if I did I just want to elaborate a little bit on that right now uh, the idea that we can't do anything the Jiva who we really are um, Jiva Shakti energy we're not the doers of activity and I know that it's not an easy thing to understand for someone that is materially inclined for someone that doesn't have spiritual understanding but I want to try to summarize as best as I can what I mean when I say we are not the doers of activity it means that everything that we are doing right now everything that I'm doing my body you know, me blinking my heart beating my heart beating anything and everything that is happening is not of my doing and illusion uh, illusion or or um, ignorance avidya which is a ah, means no right lack of vidya knowledge avidya no knowledge the lack of knowledge lacks, leads, me, leads me to believe that I'm the doer I'm the one doing all these things what do you mean I'm moving my hand right now right but according to the Vedic conclusion we're not the doers we're not doing anything who is doing it material nature material nature material energy right which is another shakti of the absolute truth is carrying out activity is carrying out that activity based based on our desires based on what we have desired for our life so there's one thing that we do have control and again based on my understanding i'm not preaching as as what i'm saying here as the absolute truth or anything like that i'm just sharing my understanding that we do have control of, over our desires meaning we do have control over what we give our attention to and, and in which mood we give our attention to so based on that material nature is carrying it out and setting up a scenario right where we can act through right which is this body everything that is that is happening in my life through this body and one an example that I like to give is that people say no I am the doer I'm doing I've, I've done so much right in my case I was born and raised in Brazil came to the United States that was my decision right to go through all the trouble to go through everything I went through to know to do everything I I plan to do to go through everything I plan to go through and deal with with the things that I didn't plan to deal with right I was the one doing those things uh, so I could make that argument but the counter argument that I always like to present and it makes sense to me 
to, to at least as a starting point of trying to understand and accept the Vedic conclusion that I am not the doer, that there is so much more about my life and my existence here right now that I have no control, no conscious or unco- like con- no control at all that is taking place without my control, that it, it, it dwarfs what I believe to have control over, right? For example, my heartbeat the functionality within my body, everything that happens um, inside this body, a lot of the things that happen outside of this body, right? Uh, Everything, so many things, coincidence, things that happen in life that I have no control whatsoever and things are happening, right? The the doors are opening, doors are shutting, uh, are closing, Um, you know, meetings are happening. It's like so so many... uh, coincidence coincidence right i don't like i don't believe in coincidences uh, they're just coincidence so many things happening that is completely totally outside of, out of my control me going to sleep right now people say oh you put yourself to sleep no you rested but your body goes into states that is not consciously in, in, uh, on your control as a matter of fact if you go without that sleep you can suffer one cannot decide oh i'm not gonna go i'm gonna eat as much as i can and from now on, I'm not going to eat anything. Or I'm not going uh, uh, not, not to eat anything. No, you can, one cannot say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat as much as I can. I'm not going to go to the bathroom. I will commend my body so I don't have to li- literally like, take it out. You know what I'm saying? Like You can't do that. You don't have control over your body. Now someone can say, oh, but some people have done this, this and that. Yogis or mystic yogis, people that have mastered their body. Yeah, but those is like the exception. The percentage of people on the planet that are able through years and years of practice and training, um, they're able to uh, uh, achieve that kind of mastery over the body. It's it's so limited, right? For, for the great majority, we know we don't have control over those things. So that is just to give an example, to, to, to give an example so we can grasp or at least start to try to grasp the idea that we don't really have any control. We can only control to focus, to give our attention to what we want or give our attention to what we don't want, right? And according to our karma, we are living our days and making decisions, right? Accepting what is favorable, rejecting what is unfavorable as we walk our path in this material body, in this life. Um, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Again, this is very deep philosophical, uh, it's a very deep, deep philosophical conversation, but that is basically the idea that we are not this body, we are uh, spirit souls, we have no control over uh, we, no, we have no control over activity, right? We have we we don't we, we don't we don't um, we don't have control over action. Action takes place regardless of what we uh, want or don't want. What we do have control is 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 uh, we have control over our focus, over our attention, which will lead that focus, that thought, that attention will lead into inspired action but again inspiration is received by us right inspiration is received and inspired us to act to move into a certain direction because action will be forced to act material nature is constantly forcing us to act in the same way you're forced to go to the bathroom in the same way you're forced to eventually fall asleep material nature you know is forcing us to act so we can be forced to act in an inspired way when we focus on our dreams and our aspirations and the things that we want to accomplish and we focus in a way that leads us towards what we want and the path that we'll take that way is natural that action will follow inspired action will follow that will take us on that direction and the other side of the coin is also true right when we focus on on why we're not getting the things we want we are why we're not finding the success uh, we want uh, that will also lead to actions thought right attention will lead to actions that will keep giving more evidence of, of as of why we're not reaching uh, our goals and aspirations so again so I don't go too much off subject here I came to conclude these these basic truths one we're not this body 
we're, we're shakti, we're spirit, so we are energy. And as energies, we have two main, there are two main factors related to who we really are, which is frequency and vibration. Shakti, energy, as any other energy in a very physics, basic uh, understanding, energy has two factors, which is frequency and vibration which when it relates to us as living beings, jiva, shakti, it means thought and emotion, right? And again, I can, I'm eventually going to make a video talking about you know, dissecting, talking, going a little deeper on my understanding of what it means, you know, uh, frequency and vibration or thought and emotion and how that affects us our day to day and what we attract into our lives. But that's one, we're not this body, we're jiva shakti. Two is the nature of this material world, this material manifestation, right? The nature of this material world, this Maya Shakti, right? That we have come into this, this manifested world, which again in the Vedic scriptures is presented as Maya. And, and a lot of people like to focus on the idea of, uh, which is true, of course, 100% true, but on the, the idea and understanding. Uh, of Maya being illusion, not real, right? Which again, it's 100% true. That is the conclusion Srila Prabhupada and so many other charyas came to to present. And I understand, and I, and I believe that, um, you know, I accept and I understand uh, what they're trying to present. But I think that in focusing on the fact and in, in, in disregarding this material in, in, uh, energy as illusion and not trying to understand that illusion on how to navigate and how that how I'm interacting with that illusion a lot of people are actually fa falling um, uh, prey of that material energy and I thought it was super interesting because another word for another word for um, this material energy is uh, or the presiding Didi for DT for this material energy it's uh, Durga Devi right and Durga is also known as the jail keeper so it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing that that we can see that this material energy and its presiding deity, this material energy is considered a a, a jail, and its presiding is the, its presiding deity is the jail keeper, keeping the living the living entity here. So I think it's important for for me to understand how does that happen, right? Am I and, you know, is there assertion? Is, is there someone doing something to me or keeping me here? A lot of people think that that is the case. Again, from my back, background as a Christian, there's the belief of the devil, right? So you're being influenced by the devil. It's keeping you here, influencing you to do you know, bad deeds, to, to get involved with bad things. And that is not my understanding, and I know that that is not the Vedic conclusion. That, that there is no assertion. Nobody is doing anything to anyone. Actually, let me say like this: nobody is doing anything to anyone that is not desiring, meaning uh, uh, giving thought to whatever is happening. Does that make sense? And that is the main point I believe is, is misunderstood regarding the nature of this material world, which is what it's all given. Maya is all given. The way I like to think about it is imagine an ocean, right? Because again, Maya is also a Shakti. Of, it's, 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 an, it's, a, it's an energy of the Supreme, right? In the same way that we are Shakti, we are energy, we are Jiva Shakti. Maya, this material manifestation, right? This material body, everything we see, this bone, everything, everything we see that is made, made by particles, right? By God particles by atoms and every single atom has consciousness the Vedic scriptures talk about that how Krishna manifests himself and in every single atom right he enters every single atom so that what the scientists came to see whether the empty empty space between the neutrons and proton protons or something like that I'm not a physicist just a little bit that I heard about it right there's empty space what is that the empty space conscious God thought exists in there right and that thought communicates that that expansion of God that exists within every single thing, single atom communicates with that expansion of God, the Paramatma, 
that exists within my heart. And heart means the center of my consciousness, the center of my thought, what has my attention. So in that way, we are interacting with this material manifestation. In which way? Whatever I give my attention to, whatever I focus, where I give thought, in, in that way is interacting with this ocean, this maya shakti, this, this energy, this ocean, right? And because God is all good, which has everything to do with the third absolute truth, um, as I like to see it, which is God is all good. God is all good. He's complete in himself, by himself. He doesn't need anything. And he is fulfilling the desires of everyone. He's the only Purusha, right? the only master, the only doer, the original being. And everything else is his manifestation, right? That is that is how the, the Vedic scriptures present that. It was something that was easy for me to to accept. I'm not gonna claim to understand, but I'm endeavoring to try to have you know to to have a deeper and deeper understanding of how this material nature works. Uh, what is my nature as a living being, as Jiva Shakti, the nature of this material world, and the nature of the absolute truth. And I came to conclude up to this point that God is all good and how he does demonstrate every single day at every single moment his goodness his benevolence is the fact that he created a plane of existence where the jiva or we who we are we wanted to enjoy separate from him and be the center of our own existence meaning we wanted to lord lord over you know our environment right and hence, this Shakti, this Maya Shakti, where the Jiva, the, Jiva, the Jiva, who we are, the Jiva can go into that Shakti and through focus, through thought, can mold that plane of existence, consciously or unconsciously. Now, where we live in today, Kali Yuga, according to the Vedic scriptures, is the age of quarrel and ignorance, and we see that a lot, unfortunately, everywhere you look, on your phone, online, TVs, everywhere, there's so much, so, so much quarrel, right? People are quarreling, pointing big fingers. Um, I like one thing that I heard Srila Prabhupada said is, is this dog and cat mentality, right? It's dogs and cat, the dog barking at the cat, the cat hissing at the dog, right? And you see that a lot, and you see that even within spiritual societies you see even with people with so-called devotees or so-called Christians having that mentality going online and pointing fingers at others telling them what they are doing and and one may say oh but you know Srila Prabhupada and other other spiritual masters they did that and it's true but you have to you have to I think one has to consider uh, who were they talking to and who they are or the other way around. You have to consider who they are and who were they talking to. First of all, who they are. They are guru. They have taken on that position, right? And guru has to instruct the disciple. It's the guru's uh, duty to, 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 uh, to instruct, to be heavy and instruct the disciple. If I'm not guru, if I have not taken that position on trying to instruct others and 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 you know, uh, in, you know, impart knowledge or prove others wrongs, wrong. I believe I'm actually committing offenses. But beyond that, because you know, people say we're committing offenses, this is also a vague thing that I people I think people don't really understand what it means you know, to be committing offenses. But which I, again I can get into more detail uh, uh, when talking about that. But basically, when I try to find fault on others or say, why are people doing this? Why aren't people doing that? Anytime I see, especially someone that claims to be a devotee or claims to have some, claim to have some spiritual understanding because he or she have been practicing for a while, I think is evidence. One might say, one might ask, Chaitanya, why are you saying, why are you saying they don't understand? Because they are giving me evidence based on their behavior and how they are communicating that they have not understood what Srila Prabhupada and Shula, Shula, you know, Shula Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Ram Maharaj or what our Vaishnavacharas came to give. Why? Because they are clearly 
trying to consciously and again m- most of the time i i believe it's unconsciously they are trying to assume the position of guru and prove other people wrong and by sh- you know trying to show them a better way in their opinion and the way for which which it's you know strike number one you're not guru stop trying to give other people's instructions and that is something that I try myself I, I, tell, I tell myself I've been telling myself for quite a while right I try to influence influence those that are under my protection right that I can influence my wife my children but beyond that no I have no right right and second of all uh, one is I'm not guru and second of all the, the, it's the way they're going about it which is what which is giving attention to focus thought towards what is not wanted i'll give you an example the whole thing regarding vaccination right vaccines and the whole thing with the with the c19 right you see a lot of people going online and i'm going to sp- speak about you know, the communities that i have some con- connection with right the christian communities um, down there in brazil but most prominent and it's funny to see because that is that doesn't happen a lot within the Christian community that I see there in Brazil but it happens a lot within the Hare Krishna community that I'm part of, that I'm part of here in the United States because the devotees they think or these inspired in devotees they think they have you know they they veda so much knowledge right we shouldn't be doing this we shouldn't be doing that Shila Prabhupada that said this Shila Prabhupada said that they're so strong in sharing their opinion and telling people what they should not be doing, right? Don't do this, you know, or look what they're doing. And they try to share evidence on Facebook and other platforms of how is it so bad, how it is so bad what the government's doing, what the people that are trying to control the world is doing. But they don't understand. And, and again, again, I don't even like how it sounds when I say they don't understand. I don't mean to be accusatory and pointing fingers just trying to find the best way possible to share my understanding when, so I'm going to say when we take that position on, on pointing fingers and try to show people what we believe is wrong for example the government right? the United States government they say or sometimes we say don't, 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 don't trust the government you know, don't take anything from the government or this, this and that I think it's a faulty approach and their approach is evidence that they have not understood this this um, this this knowledge. Why? Because we're not the doers, right? I cannot do anything. I cannot influence anything. I can only focus and desire for myself and hope that that focus and desire for what I want and for what and for what I want for those that are that I can influence, right? my family friends etc i can i can hope and pray and surrender to god's um to god's mercy or to god's will right and 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 develop the faith that that alone will create the path of least resistance which will lead me towards what i want but instead what i see is, pe- is people pushing against the government right they are evil they are trying to control you or they are trying to do this which again because this material nature is it's it's all given right it's con- really it's continually it's continuously and always giving you evidence of what you choose to believe but another way to to say or or to present it material nature as all given is also bonding right because if I focus to give my attention on what the government is not doing, how the government is evil, I am bound to see more evidence of it. Material nature will give me more evidence of what I believe to be the truth. Because, again, just based on my understanding, and if anyone at all is watching this and has a different understanding and would like to engage in debate, not confrontation, not violence, right? Just a healthy debate. Uh, I'm completely open to it, but I believe it, 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 it makes so much sense to me because what I came to understand is that material nature is Shakti, is energy, right? Maya Shakti. So if, if you think of energy like something energetic, vibrating, right? 
And that energy emit, emits a frequency. We know that, right? Energy emits a frequency. So material energy is there. It's, it holds everything and anything we put our, our, our thought and attention on, right? That thought with emotion, with vibrate and think about something. Material nature is primed to match whatever we bring to the table. So if I'm focusing on a government that is, that is oppressing people, that is cheating people, material nature immediately sends me, immediately match that signal, that frequency, and it starts sending me more of it. I completely believe that to be the truth. And, and uh, conversely, or conversely, or on the other side of the coin, it is that if I understand who I really am, if I understand I'm not the doer, I am Jiva Shakti, I can only influence things around me through thought and emotion. When observing this kind of scenario, for example, the, the government, and I like talking the government because I have a different perspective. I was born and raised in Brazil. So when I think about the government, the United States government, I actually, appreciation comes to mind, right? My family and I just went for a, for a, a long uh, road trip and I have so much appreciation to be able to drive in these highways, right? Four, or five lanes of traffic, open traffic, highways. Um, again, maybe some Brazilian is, you know, is, uh, might listen to this and say like, oh, whatever, he's been a hater, but Brazil is not that bad. And it's true, it's not that bad, right? It's a great country, but I had the experience to drive, to travel around several states around Brazil, through several st states around Brazil, and, and, and one has to, to, to uh, accept that that is not the reality in South America, even in a, de in a developing country like Brazil, right? I remember, again, I'm 45 years old. I've been here for, for you know, 17 years now. Um, I was a young man in Brazil, traveling, going through states. I remember, I was just talking to my wife the other day about this. I was traveling from, traveling from one city, uh, from, from my hometown to another city for work and I went through a pothole that literally broke the ax, the axle, the axle, right, um, on my car. It broke it. I, I was had to wait for seven hours, almost seven hours for a tow truck to come to take me to a, to a, to a mechanic, right? The guy was kind enough to work until 9 p.m. to, to get it fixed, right? And, and I always joking with my wife, if that guy didn't want to, didn't, wasn't kind enough to work that late and get it fixed, if he told me, listen, there's nothing I can do, I'm gonna close the shop, I'll be back tomorrow. It's not like here that I'm gonna, oh, okay, right in an exit, I have a motel, I can you know, you know, get a, a night in a hotel. It's not as convenient. Yes, you find the hotels in Brazil, side of road hotel, but it's not nearly as convenient as what the, the uh, it's not nearly, nearly as convenient as it is here in the United States. So I have so much appreciation for the government. Is it perfect? No, it's not. Is there corruption? Corruption? Of course there is. Everywhere there's corruption, right? In this material world, especially for people that don't have spiritual understanding, that they think they are the controllers, right? That's why we are all here in the first place. We want to live a life of independence. Right? And, and Krishna, God, created this material manifestation so we can experience that life. But going back to my point, in the same way, when I approach life like this and show appreciation for what am I, exper I, I, I am experiencing, right? So appreciation for the government, for these roads, beautiful roads that I can travel on, like the convenience that I have as, as a citizen the convenience that my family, the, the infrastructure that I can take advantage of, right, that is put in place based on the taxes that we pay. There's so many things, so many aspects that I can, and no one can say, no, you cannot. Every single person can, is free to focus in, in, in that way. And when it comes to anything, any subject, uh, another way I heard someone saying is like, is like, uh, is like a piece, like a, like a, uh, any subject, is like something, right? Like my phone right here, right? Any subject is two subjects, is what you want and the lack of what is wanted. So when I pick up this subject, 
inevitably, I pick up the two ends of the same subject. I pick up the, what is wanted related to the subject, and I pick up what is unwanted related to the subject. So if the subject is the government, right, and what is happening right now, I, pick up the, I picked up the subject. Now it's up to me. I am free to focus on what is wanted. And when it comes to the government, what is wanted? I want in a government, I, maybe I, I can, based on what's going on, I cannot jump straight into appreciation when it comes to certain aspects, right, of the government and its influence in my life right now. But there are certainly plenty of subjects related to the government that I can go into appreciation, like I just did when it comes to, to, to parks roads, so many things that are, that are presented and, and preserved, maintained by the governmental like structure that we have in place right now. But what I see a lot of people doing is, is they go straight and they look at the government, then they focus on what they don't like in their lives, like the government pushing for vaccination, so many things, and they campaign against it not knowing that they're very f the very fact that they're focusing on it and pushing against it material nature is set up to send more of it more more and that's why i think it's so beautiful because god's mercy is shown in this way whatever we want as living entities whatever we want to experience as living entities right as as uh, uh, as someone that wanted to be the center of their own existence, it is happening, it is available to us right now. And that comes to the most uh, bonding thing, to subject matter, to the, to the most freeing or enlightening, enlightening, yeah, enlightening uh, subject matter. Whatever I choose to give my, my attention, material nature or uh, 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 um, uh, yoga maya or maha maya again you can go deeper and deeper in the subject but maya will s create the path of least resistance I know I mentioned a little bit about maha maya, yoga maya I know this video is already going for 40, 40, 40 uh, minutes if you're still listening thank you so much I just I think these subjects are, 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 are fascinating and we need to have more and more of these conversations so we can understand truly understand especially as spiritual practitioners how what is the best approach when dealing with with others with everything that is happening today within this material world and and how we can deal with it in a way that will benefit us not only in a material way right in a family in our family lives in our work lives in any aspect of our lives but mainly how we would benefit us ultimately ultimately will benefit us as as living beings as jiva shaktis right i think it's so important so who we really are the nature of this material world all given all given i have to focus on what i want understanding that i am not the door i have only control the only thing that i have control over is thought and attention so whatever subject matter i am faced with I have a choice to focus on what is wanted or what is unwanted. When it comes to the government and everything that is happening, I have a choice. What do I want? I focus on, you know, do I want, um, you know, uh, being forced to, 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 you know, forced vaccinations and whatever your belief is, gun rights, I want people to come to my door and, and confiscate my things and, you know, lose my privacy. Of course I don't want that. So what is my, what, what can I do to contribute in a way that will create an environment that where that doesn't take place? I believe that what I can do is focus my thought, emotion, my attention away from that. Why? Because I'm not the doer. I'm not the doer. If I believe I have to do something, I have to push against it, I'm under illusion. Now, with that being said, if you are someone that is in the fight, you know, by chance or by choice, for you know, by by destiny, by your karma, you are put in a situation where you do have a power of influence. Maybe you're a politician, you're a community leader, you are in a position of leadership, 
and you do have a desire to improve a situation, then it is your duty, right, to move in that direction, but in, and, and, and maybe, quote unquote, push against it. But how we push against it is also so important to be understood. We have to p push against it by constantly present solutions, present better ways, present uh, um, avenues, and then uh, better avenues, and then walk that path. But again, unfortunately, what you see is a lot of people just pushing against what, what is screaming and shouting against what is not wanted without really presenting a better way, a better solution. That is for those that are very involved with it. But for someone like the average citizen, someone like myself, given you know, the whole government situation as an example, what do I believe is the best situation? For me to disengage and then use what I believe is faith, belief that there is a controller, there is someone that advocates in my behalf that is handling all those things. And more than handling, it's allowing everything to take place. And my job is to give the other cheek and focus on what is wanted. Focus on, on, on what I want, out, you know, regardless of whatever is taking place right now. And I think it's beautiful because for devotees, for true bhaktas, true devotees of the Lord, you see that that is their practice. That is their practice. They focus on their devotion, on their mission which is their mission to, 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 to God, their mission to their guru. They focus on speak about what is wanted. You see, they no, don't waste a lot of time discussing what is, what is going on, this position, that politician, this politician. And I see so many, so many times people use examples or, or, or things that Srila Prabhupada said in conversations to push their, agen their, their agenda of pushing against things. And I think it's such a disservice, disservice and it, and it misrepresents Srila Prabhupada so much because that was not his approach. He spoke that way, first of all, because he's talking about his disciples and meeting his disciples where they were, he's speaking in a, in a way that they would understand to grab their attention so they could listen to what they're saying and understand and finally move in the direction of, wh of what is wanted, which is what? Service, right? Uh, understanding of the philosophy, understanding of who we really are. And, and, and it is something that I think we have to consciously be aware of. And it comes easier when you understand who we really are, the nature of this world, and the nature of Bhagavan. We're Jiva Shakti, not the doers, not the controllers. We can only think and desire, right? Thought and emotion, frequency and thought. Then the nature of this world, Maya Shakti, Yoga Maya, Maha Maya, right? Is also energy there, prompt, primed to meet us where we are and, and, and then send more of it according to the momentum, you know, enhance the momentum, send more according to our focus, according to our desire. And then the third, the, uh, the third aspect is the nature of God is all given, all good. He created, a, he created a, a plane of existence where everything can be achieved. Everything from the lowest point of existence, from the highest point of existence of consciousness, it can be achieved within, it can be accessed in this plane of existence, right? The highest point of love of Godhead, right? It, that path can be walked. You, we can go down that path. We can move in that direction in this material body. And we do that through focus, through thought, through attention, understanding uh, our, you know, the spiritual master, understanding our acharyas, understanding uh, what they came to give, what they came to communicate. Um, I know this is very deep, philosophical. I love having these conversations. I'm going to keep sharing more and more of these, um, talking about uh, more and more about these things, uh, trying to be more specific when it comes to specific subjects, because I think that everything that I just tried to say in, in, the, in, the, last, uh, in the past 45 minutes relates to everything, every single aspect of our lives, right? Relationships. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Right when it comes to talking, when it comes up, when it comes to to engaging in a relationship with my wife, again the subject 
is relationship. When I pick that subject, there are two aspects, what is wanted and what is unwanted. And a lot of people, when they're going through trouble, I had that conversation with, with an acquaintance years and years ago. He was confining with me, sharing a little bit that he was having trouble in his marriage. And I tried to get him to, 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 to talk to me and share, you know, share what do you want. And he literally couldn't verbalize what he wanted. Every time the, you know, he started talking, the conversation would, would uh, the conversation turned to what was happening in the moment, right? She's doing this, which is funny because the wife or the ex-wife at this point, but the wife at the time was was the the main reason that things were not working out, right? Convenient. So, you know, every time I asked him to speak, you know, what do you want? What do you want? It's always like, I don't want this. She's doing this. She's doing that. We're not doing this. We're doing that. I was asking him, what do you want? Like, out of this relationship, you know, it, it was so bad that I had to coach him. I'm not coach him, but, you know, kind of pave, pave the way, almost take the words out of his mouth. It's like, do you want love? Do you want connection? Do you want, do you want, uh, 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 right, have a great relationship with the mother of your kids? Do you want to have longevity in a healthy, and beautiful relationship? The answer, the answer is unequivocally yes, yes. But he had so much momentum on focusing on what is not wanted because of the momentum he was living in in, in his life at that moment with his wife and everything that was going on. That was hard for him because he didn't have practice to stop that momentum consciously where he stood in front of me at that time and make the choice to yes, although I am, I have this kind of momentum, things are not well right now, I have the, the power of, of thought and focus and I can start moving in the direction of what I want. And I even asked him, like, do you, can you remember a time that you guys were uh, doing well, right? That you felt like you were in love. He's like, yes. I was like, sure. Right after you guys get married, you can say, how did you? you know, and I'm asking, how did you meet? How did this happen? And you see, some, you know, some, sometimes he was talking about it, and his smile would come to his face. I was like, see, so it is there, right? And I know a lot of other things happened that 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 uh, diminished those moments, but you have the power. You have the the power of focus and thought. And you can, st and, and that's why I, f I think faith is so important. Because if one develops faith, faith is what helps us go down deep, d you know, dive deep in those thoughts, and reach towards what is wanted, reach towards a better feeling thought, right? Um, anyways, this is where I want to share today. I think the main the main point of this video. I know I talked a lot. I go all over the place. Hopefully, I was able to put some some coherent thought here together. But the, moin the main point is that uh, the second absolute truth, as I like to see it, is the nature of this world, the nature of this material world, the nature of maya, right? Which has two aspects. Maha maya, which is the gross, leads with the gross material energy, just giving, 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 right? Anything that the jiva has focus on, like and is materially focused, Mahamaya is meeting where is meeting us where we are. And then Yoga Maya, which is this spiritual, more subtle aspect of the same energy that is also in the same way, has the same functions function, but it leads it it, it, it dealt not leads. It dealt with whom we really are. Jiva Shakti, spirit soul. In the moment that we start seeing ourselves as who we really are, Jiva Shakti, spirit shows, right? A marginal potency of the Supreme Absolute Truth with a specific function in connection to that, super, that Supreme Absolute Truth, and we act under that consciousness, Yoga Maya then takes, takes uh, precedent and start meeting us wherever we are and also creates the path of lead, least resistance towards what we want. I hope this brings some value uh, um, to you, wherever you are right now, whatever you're experiencing. Um, as always, if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to leave that like button. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the cha channel, as I always say, is good karma. And um, until next time, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Hare Krishna.
if that one question is there, uh, what should be our thought? Which thought shall we keep in our mind? Then everything will be auspicious. That is the question. Answer. An answer. He said, Mahaguru will give an answer. Sadhu Mahaguru. You should understand and know this whole world. Whatever you see and find here, they are all perpendicular for Krishna's enjoyment. Understand? Krishna is the only enjoyer. And they are all perpendicular for Krishna's enjoyer. enjoyment, not for your enjoyment. This is the thought. Huh? If you can think like that, Always in your mind, stupid mind, then there will be all auspiciousness. Huh? Give up your minute independence. Your minute jiva you are, your minute independence. Understand? Give up that minute independence, completely surrender. That is the proper use. Of independence. Karuna Yadattam, Supreme Lord has granted mercifully, huh? granted to you mercifully this minute independence. To make its proper use. What is proper use? That to surrender Sarvatamman Pajjajya Mahamekam Saranam Brava. That is the instruction, most concluding instruction in Bhagavad Gita. Abandoning all the varieties of dharma, just surrender to me. Unless you have independence, you cannot do it. Can, can it surrender? It has no independence. It cannot. But the jiva can. That because jiva has independence, mind is independence, and Lord has granted this mind independence to him merciful. Karunayatata. You understand?